Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're going to be talking about the things that I did to become a significantly faster editor within about two weeks' time. For the last few seasons, I felt that editing was somewhat of a weakness in my own personal gameplay and overall skill as a Fortnite player. I definitely don't think I was horrible at editing or anything, but compared to the other mechanics in the game like gun skill and building, it just felt like I wasn't as confident in my ability to make certain advanced edit plays. So towards the end of Season X and beginning of Chapter 2 Season 1, I decided that I wanted to change that. And by making three specific changes, I feel that my editing is greatly improved to what it was even just a few weeks ago. So without further ado, let's go over what exactly I did to accomplish that. Alright, so the first change that I made which had a very positive impact on my editing speed and accuracy was actually turning on the setting Confirm Edit on Release. This was the most noteworthy new setting added to the game at the beginning of Chapter 2 Season 1, and it's a setting available for both controller and keyboard and mouse players. The interesting thing about Confirm Edit on Release is that it's one of the most controversial settings that I've ever seen added into the game, especially for controller players. I've talked to some pro-level controller players who say it's a great setting that they absolutely love, and then I've talked to other pro-level controller players who think it actually makes editing worse. But in my experience, I think it's a great setting that's made me a better editor. The biggest positive of Confirm Edit on Release is as simple as this. It eliminates a button that you have to press while making the majority of your edits. Editing is probably the single most mechanically challenging thing to do in all of Fortnite. And a lot of times, you're going to be making edits in incredibly high pressure situations. Maybe you're being pressured by an enemy and you need to edit out of your one by one pretty much instantly. Or maybe you block an enemy off who's going for high ground and then you need to quickly edit down on them to deal some damage. The exact specifics aren't really important, but in those situations I just described, you're going to need to press a bunch of different buttons very quickly, which a lot of players find really difficult to do. So that's the first advantage of having one less button to press, it means less overall movement of your fingers. Also, if you're a good Fortnite player, your mind is going to be thinking about a million different things at once in those chaotic high pressure situations. You're going to think about the edit you're currently making, the next edit you're going to make, where the enemy's positioned, what you expect them to do next, and so many other things on top of that. So it may sound like not needing to press one extra button to confirm your edit isn't really a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but with so many other things to focus on, it really does seem to make a difference. Now, the reason not everyone agrees that Confirm Edit on Release is a necessary setting is because they believe that confirming an edit with double edit binds is actually faster than when you use Confirm on Release. And to be honest, there may actually be some truth to that. The specifics as to why that is are a little confusing, so I won't go too far in depth about it, but the main theory is that since the vast majority of players use right trigger slash R2 to select squares while editing, it actually takes longer for the game to register that a trigger has been fully released than it would if you just normally press the button. This is barely noticeable when doing regular single edits, but some players feel that it limits their ability to do certain double edits, like the super common editing through a floor and pyramid you place over your head. I personally haven't encountered those problems, so maybe it's something that you get used to over time, but I just wanted to make sure I presented both sides of the argument, even though I'm a big fan of Confirm on Release. But I think the next change I made helped me even more with my editing than confirm on release, and that's the changes I made to my custom binds. If you guys have followed my channel for a while, you may know that I just absolutely hate switching to any kind of new binds in Fortnite. I mean, I played on the original standard button layout until about three to four months after Builder Pro came out, when pretty much everybody else switched immediately. 
I just always had this mindset with binds and settings in Fortnite that was basically, if it isn't broken, then why try to fix it? I mean, my previous binds definitely weren't the worst in the world, but they were also nowhere near the most efficient binds possible. And even though I knew that, like I said earlier, I still considered myself at least pretty solid at editing, so I kinda doubted how much two or three bind changes would actually make an impact. However, with a few days left before the end of Season X, I was kinda bored since there really wasn't much to do, and I basically said to myself, alright, let me just test out what switching to better binds would actually do. And in case you're curious, the binds I switched to are pretty much the binds that I shared in my Best Binds for Controller Players video from a few weeks ago. I turned on Sprint by default so I could use left stick slash L3 as edit, right trigger slash R2 to select the squares while editing, left trigger slash L2 to reset the edit, and then RB slash R1 to confirm the edit, although I very rarely have to use that bind because of confirm edit on release. I'm sure there are at least a few people out there who, like I was, are playing on binds that technically aren't horrible, but you also know are nowhere near the best. I totally understand that switching can be annoying, and that one to two day period where you're just totally lost while learning the new binds is the worst, but trust me, it really is worth it in the long run. It probably isn't apparent unless you paid close attention to literally every single gameplay I've uploaded over the past one to two months, which I definitely don't expect anybody has done, but I'm making certain editing plays during regular situations in normal games now that I probably wouldn't have even attempted in creative mode before switching my binds because I simply wouldn't have been able to do them. And even though I've been stubborn with switching binds slash settings many different times in the past, after seeing how stupid I was for staying on less than ideal binds, I'm gonna make sure I never do that again. The final change I made that helped me improve my editing was turning on the setting Edit Mode Aim Assist. Edit Mode Aim Assist is a setting that I've talked about once or twice before on this channel, but I was always kind on the fence about whether or not it was really a must-use setting. Towards the middle slash end of Season X, I'd go through these weird periods where I'd use it for a day or two, then turn it off for a few days, then try it again, it was kind of a mess. And that only got more complicated when they added the new aim assist and sensitivity into the game, because if you use that, for some reason the game doesn't allow you to use edit mode aim assist. But since I'm on legacy aim assist and settings as of right now, I decided that since I switched my binds and turned on confirm edit on release, I would also give edit mode aim assist a real try this time around. And I gotta say, even though I was a little indifferent about it for maybe the first two or three days after I switched, now I just absolutely love it, and I really couldn't even imagine trying to edit without it. I've gone kinda in-depth about all the positives of it before, so I won't really do that in this video, but basically it prevents your crosshair from going outside the squares while editing, which just makes the whole process a little easier and quicker. I think the comparison I used in a previous video was that it's like when you were a little kid and they put the bumpers up for you whenever you went bowling, and that basically prevented your ball from going into the gutter. That's what Edit Mode Aim Assist does, and it's one of the huge reasons why so many really good controller players are staying on Legacy Settings and Aim Assist. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. This video was about how I improved my editing in Fortnite, so I want to know what you guys think about your editing skill. Is it one of your strengths as a Fortnite player, or are you kinda like how I was a few weeks ago, and it's something that you feel you need to get better at? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.